welcome back to my channel. It's been two weeks already since we have been fermenting the uh, Hefeweizen uh, beer that we did two weeks ago. So it's bottling day finally. Uh, so I'm going to show you um, everything I've got here. Um, you know, sanitation is so important at this time. So be sure and go back and look at the series that I have. I have one labeled sanitation uh, if you want to know how to sanitize everything. But in this case, we've got to um, sanitize all of our bottles. We're going to get about 10, 12 ounce bottles out of this one gallon batch of beer that I made. Um, our bottling bucket needs to be sanitized. Um, and any of the, like the, the siphoning tube. Um, and I even sanitized the pan that I'm using to boil the priming sugar in. So let me show you everything. All right, so I went ahead and sanitized 12 flip top bottles. I'm using flip tops. You can buy bottle caps and a capper, um, but I just think these are easier. Uh, these little stoppers go up and then you just um, use pressure to pop them down. Um, and then we're going to store our beer for two weeks in these bottles. Now you really should get brown, dark bottles. Um, but this is such a small batch because you don't want the light to get it. I'm just going to pack these away in, a, in the boxes they came in for two weeks so there won't be any light. Put them in a closet and they should be just fine. But you should really actually get brown ones. would probably be the best. And then over here I've got my sanitation bucket. Okay, so I mixed up just two gallons of uh, sanitizer, and then, let me turn this around. I have to balance it in there because this is going to be my bottling bucket, okay? So this also holds, this holds two gallons, um, but I bought this little spout and drilled a hole here, okay? So we're going to siphon our beer out of our fermenter here pretty quick into this bucket and you can tell it's sanitizing as well also don't forget to open this valve to let the sanitizer go through the valve and shut it and let it sit there for a little bit um technically just one minute will do that okay so this is called uh priming sugar this is about five ounces so you use one ounce per gallon so this is this whole bag would be for a five gallon batch um so i went ahead and weighed out one ounce of this and then what you do, you guys, is I went ahead and sanitized this um, pan and the spoon. And I've already done this because it has to cool. Um, but I put that in there with just like, I don't know, a half a cup of water. Brought it to a boil, stirred it. It's not to sanitize it. It's really just to incorporate it into a solution uh, with that priming sugar. So what is priming sugar? Why do we use it? So we want to carbonate our beer, okay? So... The yeast in the fermenter, I'll show you here in a minute, um, it, after two weeks, it's pretty much stopped bubbling um, because it's produced enough alcohol. So yeast likes sugar. Um, and so the fermentables, the sugar, was the barley that we put in there, the malt extract that we put in there when we actually did the boil. Um, and over two weeks, then it eats the sugar. That's what yeast likes to do. And it puts off two byproducts, okay, CO2, so carbon dioxide, and alcohol um and so once it kind of stops bubbling you'll just you know the co2 causes pressure pressure that comes out of the airlock um but now we're going to put it in bottles so what we need to do is give that yeast just a little bit more sugar to eat to create carbon dioxide so it's the co2 we're interested in this time Okay, so when we put it in these flip-top bottles, okay, that'll hold that pressure in there. We're going to let it sit for two weeks, and at the end of that, when we pop that open, it should be carbonated. Um, that's when you're bottling. So if you're doing bigger batches, like five-gallon batches, um, you uh, use a keg, and then that's just CO2 that you infuse into the keg. So you don't have to use priming sugar in that case. But I'm doing a real small batch, just about 10 bottles, 10 12-ounce bottles, um, and so the priming sugar, like I said, that I made over there in that solution, that's going to go in with our beer out of the fermenter that I'll show you here in a minute. And then that way it's distributed evenly. So you wouldn't want to just take a little bit of sugar and pour it into each bottle. First of all, that'd just be messy. <laughs> wouldn't be very sanitary. Um, but with when you put it into the water and boil it for just a couple minutes, let it sit. We want it to cool. Um, and then you mix it in with that beer. Then each bottle is going to hopefully get the same amount of sugar. So that's why we use priming sugar. It's for carbonation. All of these bottles have been sanitized. I always like to have a little bit of sanitizer in a spray bottle so that right before I can still kind of spray down those stoppers and kind of the fronts of the bottles.
Okay, so here is the Hefeweizen after two weeks in the glass fermenter. This airlock was on top. I actually, when I took it out of the coat closet, it fell off because I hit something. So I don't want to put that back on there because I want everything to be sanitized. So I'm just going to put that down in my sanitizer real quick. Okay, so let's take a look. So you can see that the yeast has settled, this yeast cake down here. Okay, so when you take it from the location that you were storing it, you don't want to slosh it around, okay, because you don't want all of that to be in your beer. If you have a little bit of yeast in your beer, uh, in the bottles, it's fine. It's kind of a novelty when it's um, uh, a homebrew. I think it tastes kind of good, but you certainly want to uh, kind of avoid that the best that you can. And then you can see we kind of have some stuff that's stuck up here, okay? But you can tell that it's gotten more clear. Um, I was hoping to keep that airlock on there to show you that it wasn't, it just had like, it really wasn't bubbling anymore. I hope there's still enough yeast in there with the priming sugar um, to be able to carbonate it. And I'm sure, I'm sure that we do. Here's the setup. Because we have a spout on the bottling bucket, um, and you want to put it all the way to the bottom so that as you are draining that into your bottles through the tubing, you wouldn't want it up top, right? You want to put it down as far um, in the liquid as you can, but the bucket can't sit flat. So you got to have some kind of a footstool or something to sit it on. Just make sure that nothing is touching anything because of sanitation. And then we have the fermenter up here and we'll go ahead and siphon that down into this bucket. I chose to get this pumping kind of siphon and I kind of want to show you really quick I'll just have to point to it. They come with a tip on there and that kind of helps and there's gaps around that, but that helps that you're not sucking up the yeast cake, okay? So I'm actually gonna start kind of up here away from that. This is gonna go quick, okay? So I'm just gonna do, because it's just a gallon, I'm just gonna do a couple pumps here. Oh, almost got it. And make sure you drain your tube really good. There it goes. All right. My hands are sanitized. And you just want to, it's going to go super fast. And again, you don't want to, don't worry about sacrificing some beer at the bottom. Because you don't want to suck all that yeast into there. So I might just keep this on real time because it's going to go just that fast. I definitely think it's worth investing in a pump siphon like this. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay, I got done wrestling that. <laughs> Not really. But I mean, see, you're going to have some left from the bottom, but you just can't you just can't get it all because you're going to end up with that big old yeast cake, all that yeast in your bottles, and you really don't want that. Okay, so all of the beer is in my bottling bucket. Now, this is the uh, priming sugar solution that I made. So one ounce per gallon of priming sugar. Priming sugar is just a really fine, really fine, silty kind of sugar, usually just corn sugar, something that's going to dissolve and not clump. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pour that in there. I boiled it for just a couple minutes. I took it off the stove so that it at least got to room temperature. And this spoon is sanitized. And I'm just gonna kind of stir it around in there. And so that way, when we do it like that, you make a solution, put it into the beer, then hopefully each bottle will have approximately the same amount of sugar. All right, let's get bottling. Okay, I'm able to actually just do it through the spout here. Like that everything is sanitized there on that nozzle. And you only want to fill it up to about here, a little bit past the curve, because you need to leave some room, because there's going to be pressure in here because of the, uh, the CO2 from that priming sugar. So as you start to get up around that corner, it goes pretty quick. So right about there. I don't know if I'm going to get 10 of these or out, out of these or not. All right, so... Then just try not to touch the stopper part. And then these are the kind that you just, they're hard, but that's good. They pop down. That way I don't have to use the bottling cap. All right, I'm gonna finish these out. Handy 
to have a funnel that's already sanitized for that last little bit. All right. I only got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bottles. But hey, this is the first time I've done it uh, with this one gallon uh, batches. Um, it said probably 10, but um, we only got seven. Maybe hey, it is what it is. What I like to do, since these are airtight, is I like to dip each one, because they can get a little sticky, dip each one into uh, the bucket of sanitizer, and I'll take a nice clean towel and dry these off. And then I'm just going to pack these away in the box they came in, since they are clear, so that we don't get light that enters the bottle, because that can mess up the ferment, or the... Uh, the process you, you just want to the, the beer won't taste as good if the light the light will kind of break it down um, and so you just want to keep them in a dark place or even in the refrigerator uh, you don't want the refrigerator yet because we need the sugar to do its job right and if we, oops sorry I just dropped something inside the, the sink um, if I were to put these in the refrigerator right now then the yeast it would be too cold for the yeast and um, they wouldn't be able to eat the sugars from that priming sugar. Oh my gosh, I forgot to take it off of time lapse. Here I'm just saying very quickly that I'm pleased with the color that a Hefeweizen should be kind of that cloudy, clear, golden color. And then right here at the end I'm saying two weeks to carbonate and I cross my fingers. Thanks for watching.